To be honest, I didn't expect why faction avatar from networks to be any good. When I saw the first trailer, it did not dispel my doubts regarding this project. Life action remakes of animated stuff are always at the very least questionable endeavor. First, because the artistic value of the life action versions isn't exactly clear. A lot of life action movies or shows frankly have nothing new to say. They are made in order to capitalize on the already existing IP. What is the point of retelling the same story again, conveying the same ideas and thoughts again, but with real actors instead of drone characters? In the case of Avatar, it's not based on a book, or a comic book, or anything else, so the excuse that live action is just a new adaptation of a source material doesn't work since there is no source material, except the cartoon itself. So my expectations were extremely low before I started watching Netflix's Avatar The Last Airbender. And after finishing all 8 episodes, I have to admit that the show exceeded my expectations and turned out to be better than I thought it'd be. Obviously it's not even close to the original cartoon, but certain elements were, surprisingly, even better in the live action version. I am talking about almost everything regarding Zuko and Ozai. Ozai here is a different character compared to his animated counterpart. I remember him appearing only twice in the first season of the original show. First time was when Uncle Ira was telling soldiers about that infamous Agni Kai when Zuka got his burn and was banished from the Fire Nation. The second time in the last scene of the season when Ozai summoned Azua to task her with finding the Avatar. And we don't even see his face, just his silhouette. Ozai was this Palpatine-like obscure figure, an obscure main villain. But in the live action he is an active character, and we see a lot of him. I think this was a great decision, writers wanted to humanize Ozai, make him a more palpable character, that we can even understand to a certain degree. And the writers succeeded. The Agni Kai scene was better in the live action version. How was Agni Kai presented in the cartoon? Zuko comes to fight the general, then finds out that he is to fight his own father instead of the general, drops to his knees, cries and begs Ozai for mercy. Zuko doesn't even attempt to fight and defend himself. Ozai burns his son. That's it. A great scene for sure, but I honestly prefer what we saw in live action. Zuko actually fights his father, we see the whole duel. It was pretty decently choreographed and shot, we see that Zuka could defeat his father, but stopped because he didn't want to hurt Ozai, and only after that Ozai burns Zuko. We see that Ozai looks absolutely dejected when he burns his son. He doesn't find a gram of enjoyment in mutilating Zuko. This scene from Netflix's show gives us quite a few interesting details about the characters. Zuko is a great fighter, but he is too kind and compassionate compared to his father and his sister. Ozai, on the other hand, isn't really that great in bending or martial arts. He is also no monster apparently, and just a man with his ambitions. The twist with Zuko saving the Unit 41, which became his crew, was great. This twist and Agni Kai scene made Zuko a vastly more sympathetic character in the live action show. Iroh was mostly fine in my opinion, unlike Azula. There is a strange thing about age, I know that the character is 14, but I guess most people would agree Azula looks older. When I first saw her I thought she was older than Zuka, who is 16. She doesn't only look older in the cartoon, she also behaves like a late teen or like a young adult. She is fully capable of commanding the military, fighting and making tough decisions and Zuka feels way more immature with his feelings and confusions in comparison. The actress who portrayed Azula really does look 14. It's really hard to believe that this little girl can command the Fire Nation military and conquer cities. Plus her face is round while cartoon Azula's chin is pointy. This might sound like nitpicking, but the sharp face shape makes Azula look more threatening, while round shape makes live action Azula look more friendly. Now let's discuss the main cast. Out of three main characters, by far the best was Sokka. Sokka here is also a different character compared to the cartoon. He is less goofy and he's got more sense of responsibility. 
He is tasked with being the defender of the Southern Water Tribe, and he, despite his young age, tries to beat the defender. He is full of responsibility and he constantly tries to prove to others and to himself that he is worthy of being the protector of his people. He is more serious than in the cartoon, as I already said. But he's got some decently funny moments too. The script just didn't give him enough comedic material, so the actor Ian Owsley didn't have much to work with, but those rare funny episodes were executed pretty well. Fun fact about Ian Owsley that I've read while preparing the script. He's been accused of faking his Cherokee ancestry in order to get the role of Sokka in the show. Aang's actor was mostly fine for his age. At some moments he had problems conveying the character's emotions, so he just shouted Aang's phrases, trying to sound more dramatic and convincing. Other than that, I think this performance was absolutely okay. But Katara was not okay, unfortunately. Most of the time she wears the same emotionless expression on her face. Like she doesn't care about anything at all and is not interested in anything. This is very off-putting, to be honest. Definitely the worst performance in the whole show. My biggest issue with writing is this. The original show is 20 episodes each season, while live action is, as it became a norm these days, only 8 episodes. With just slightly less runtime, live action has much less going on in it. A lot of things that aren't even related were crammed together. Omashu and Jet are two separate plot lines in the first book. But in the show, Jet and his gang live in a forest nearby Omashu, operate in Omashu, and even attempt to kill King Bumi. Many things obviously were cut from the story. Overall, the journey of the main characters feels much less satisfying. They just visit three locations on their journey and that's it. You don't feel the scale of the world and this is the problem to me. Writing aside, let's discuss visual effects. The show looks decent, but at some moments you clearly see that it is VFX work. My least favorite moment from the show is when Zuko saves Iroh. Cinematography and CGI are very weird here, and the whole scene looks like it's a fan-made film. Overall, Life Action Avatar The Last Airbender is a decent show in my opinion. As I already said, I expected way worse. I enjoyed the show quite a bit and will be watching seasons 2 and 3, which were officially greenlit by Netflix. But my general opinion about live action adaptations of animation did not change. I think it's not worth wasting money and other resources trying to show the same story that we already know. There is no point in that. That's my opinion. How do you feel about live action adaptations of cartoons or anime? Share your opinions in the comment section.